Welcome back, Review A Day, episode number 209. My name is Leland, and thank you guys so much for finding my blog. Head over to dampercast.com and check out episode number 57 of uh, DamperCast, the weekly podcast I do. It's a podcast where every single week, me and uh, a couple of my buddies get together. We talk about the news stories from the week. I talk about Facebook and Craigslist. It's a lot of fun. Head over to dampercast.com. Check it out. I thank you in advance. Tonight, though, I'm very excited. I'm going to go check out a screening of Harmony Korine's Trash Humpers. If you're, if you're not familiar with Harmony Korine, the guy that wrote Kids, he also wrote and directed Gummo, Julian Donkey Boy, Mr. Lonely. Needless to say, he's fucking crazy. And if you haven't seen the trailer for Trash Humpers, and you want to see something that is kind of insane and maybe a little creepy, the trailer is anyways, uh, make sure to look up Trash Humpers, the trailer here on YouTube. It's, uh, it's pretty crazy. Guys, I went and checked out this new Jonah Hex movie based on the DC comic book. One of my favorite comic book characters, Jonah Hex. I love me some Jonah Hex comic books. Uh, so this movie, directed by Jimmy Hayward, who directed Horton Hears a Who a year or two back. Very much a departure for him. Cast-wise, though, we've got quite a terrific cast. We've got Josh Brolin playing Jonah Hex. So if I had to pick three actors to play Jonah Hex, Josh Brolin would be in that. We've also got John Malkovich, Michael Fassbender, and, and Megan Fox. So we've got a pretty interesting cast. The screenplay for this movie is by Neville Dean Taylor, the guys that wrote and directed Crank, Crank High Voltage, and Gamer. Directors I fucking love. Those dudes are crazy. This Jonah Hex movie, Jonah Hex, is a, is a, uh, a bounty hunter set in the Old West. His family is murdered by John Malkovich and Michael Fassbender. The, uh, the, the, the Malkovich and Michael Fassbender character trying to take down the government by exploding, by using these bombs that were invented by Eli Whitney. And uh, they're going to destroy the U.S. and the U.S. government calls on the quick draw of Jonah Hex to come in and try to save the day. Honestly, I, I, was, I was pretty worried going into Jonah Hex. I thought all of the trailers had, had really not excited me, but because of the cast and the fact that Neville Dean Taylor's names are attached to this movie, I went in against my better judgment. And I will say that this movie is probably four or five times better than the movie I saw in the trailer, but unfortunately that really still doesn't make that great of a movie. And I think to me, Jonah Hex, I, I, one of the things I love about the comic is that it has such a strong formula. Jonah Hex rolls into town, he typically befriends either a child or some kind of wayward prostitute, and he ends up helping this person one way or another, and he basically ends up killing a bunch of people in the village, and he's awesome, and he rides off into the sunset. And that's all I really wanted from a Jonah Hex movie, and I think at its core, this Jonah Hex movie is a pretty straightforward revenge story. Jonah Hex's family is murdered by Fess, Benjamin Malkovich, and he's got to go back and, you know, he's going to put a bullet in their heads. That's really all you need to do. But I think Jonah Hex gets really bogged down. Uh, first of all, by there's the supernatural element to the film that I don't think is really uh, used that interestingly. And I, and I don't know why they brought in it because it really does feel like something that they kind of throw in halfway through the movie. And there's these scenes where John, where... Uh, Jonah Hex is digging up old friends who I don't know who it is and I didn't really give a shit. I don't know why they added that in when at its core, I think it's just, if you gave me a straight ahead revenge thriller, that's really all you need to do. Then there's also this over the top action side to it. The kind of stuff I would come to expect from Neville Dean Taylor. But what's interesting is that so much of this movie just feels like a traditional western. It doesn't even feel like a shitty wild wild west western type deal where it's like kind of modern at the same time it feels like a straight ahead western and then they start throwing in these kind of old school nuclear bombs that were designed by eli whitney which i would be down for if this movie had the tone to pull it off i, I would be really interested to see what neville dean taylor would have done with this because those are guys who do not occupy the regular world every single film they have made has been absolutely larger than life and I would love to have seen them try to direct a larger-than-life Western. Because as it is, it's just kind of a typical Western with these weird elements that I don't think really add anything to the overall package. And, and then you add the fact that Josh Brolin is probably the actor I would want to see play Jonah Hex. John Malkovich is a great villain. Michael Fassbender. And I think all those guys do fine. They might embarrass themselves a little bit. It's not a particularly good movie. And then there's Megan Fox. And... 
It, it's kind of incredible to me how Megan Fox is so devastatingly gorgeous and terrific to look at, but the second I see her in motion on camera, she's just completely dead behind the eyes. She has that look. I feel like when you look at your dog and it kind of stares back at you, I honestly feel like Megan Fox is just delivering lines and she's not even thinking anything behind it. And it, it's just so disappointing. I give Jonah Hex a two out of five. Uh, skip it. If you guys like this review, make sure to head over to nitpicket.com or dampercast.com. Check out the podcasts I do. Thank you guys for hanging out. I'll see you guys next time.